We greet our brethren that are in the church receiving this broadcast with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are broadcasting this uh, Sunday school from the Church of Maranatha. What we do every Sunday at, at this time. We are here from our studios here in the Marani Jabul, the city of Vila Velha, in the state of Espírito Santo, for all our brethren here in Brazil and all over the world. My brethren, we are going to be here once again with the Pastor Jesuti at the period of absence from the Sunday school because of uh, trips for the Presbytery to give support to our church all over the world. And we join, we are here giving continuity to the teaching of the Word of the Lord related to the book, the book of Revelations. But above all, this month of the October, in which we're going to be celebrating another period of uh, birth of the church, Maranatha, and also the period in which we celebrate the 500 years of the Reformation of the uh, 16th century of the church, a subject we are going to approach in this Sunday school. And it's with great joy, uh, it brings us great joy to see this prophetic moment for us because it was the Lord, uh, uh, it was pleased, uh, pleasing to the Lord to give uh, a blessing of the Holy Spirit according to what we know up to the our days. So we're going to relate the word to Pastor Pastor Jodhi so we can begin our teaching this morning that we're going to do for our s schools. I want to greet the brethren with the peace of the Lord Jesus and to say that this month is the month of the Reformation as celebrated the, uh, 500 years and at the same time we want to show to the brethren the coincidence that we are living, which is that we are celebrating as well 50 years of the church Maranatha. It looks like a coincidence, but but nothing for the work of the Holy Spirit is a coincidence. So since we are going to enter into the subject, we are going to speak, give a sequence to what we have already done in the previous Sunday schools. We have focused on the book of Revelations and we began the studies uh, a, a, few, um, a few months ago about the church, the church of Asia. The historical study and prophetic study of the existence of those churches. And the first church was the church of Ephesus, the second church of Smyrna. We also made a connection with the operation of the seven spirits of the Lord and also with the first two parables of the book of chapter 13 of the book of Matthew. And it's prudent and it's even necessary that we understand uh, a story very quickly that has to be taught in order for us to uh, begin any treatment of this subject of this Sunday School. The first one is to show that the Lord prepared a project for men. And in this project, the first reaction that, w that happened it was the reaction of the enemy. He rose up against the project of the Lord, bringing a rebellion against man's life. And man, in his rebellion, um, sinned with disobedience. So that was the first project in which there was a first rebellion against the project of God, which was the, through the rebellion of our first parents, Adam and Eve. And on the second, the, in the second moment, the action of the enemy, the enemy of our souls, was to tamp, try to interrupt the genealogy, the royal genealogy of Jesus. The Breton can remember that the history of Jesus is within a genealogy of kings, the kings of Israel. And there was a moment in which a woman killed every children of the kings because she was um, disappointed with something that ha had happened and she didn't know 
that someone had taken one of the children, the census of the king, and hid in the house of the Lord. So this attack was not successful because a uh, few years, six, seven years later, the child was presented and they said, this is the descendant, this is the genealogy of this king that left now a uh, successor, so then it will continue its work. And from this genealogy came Jesus Christ. So there was also another moment of opposition in which when Jesus was born, soon came the order from Pharaoh, from the herd. When Jesus was running away with the family, the parents were taking Jesus to Egypt to hide from, uh, no, from Herod. Sorry, I'm getting confused. He went to the he went to the areas of the Pharaoh later. So Herod wanted to kill him, but God also operated this deliverance. So the word, the project, continued. And the project now, the last project, it extends to the church of the Lord to all the way to our days. But the enemy, his intention was to destroy, has always been to destroy from the destruction of the apostolic doctrine through the destruction of the word. So we've seen in the uh, things that we have studied, studied in the book of uh, Revelations and also through the parables, the moments of intervention of the world against the word. The direction of the world to the parable always existed. It will continue to exist. So it's very good that we understand that uh, the church since the beginning, but historic historical period of, of the church from Ephesus and Smyrna, we'll see the trials that they have to go through in order for the word uh, to prevent the word from um, remaining. So we see in, in a way that it would, the objective was to destroy everything that was related to the resurrection of Jesus, because with the resurrection of Jesus, the project would remain standing. Um, the fight against the Messiah was uh, and, uh, against his birth and also against his death was was invalid because Jesus resurrected because and the apostolical church now begins to live in the moment in which it continues its survival in function now of a fellowship a close fellowship with with the word so the word is established in the Apostolic Church when we see in the book of Acts of the Apostles and all the letters between Paul and the other the others that maintained and then wrote to their brethren and to the church the church of the time they wrote the doctrine so the doctrine was established there so now the, the great persecutions started and we know that the, the greatest persecution Firstly, happened through the opposition, the position. So the second was through death. So first in Ephesus, Ephesus, there was an opposition to the word, and then there was an opposition against the word, and then they went against exactly over those who had the testimony of the word, those that were leaving the word, the doctrine, through the life and their testimony, their personal testimony of death. So they were going to be crucified into the firewood, to the arenas, and there, the, there were um, death of every type. The church was living a moment of uh, their worst situation of life and, s and survival. And sometimes they think that the concern was only against the Christians. Jesus, when we see in the book of uh, Revelations, Jesus manifests in the book with great love for the church. But in fact, the understanding that he had was that 
the word should remain. Why? Because the word would not stop from existing. Man would pass. But those that passed to the Lord, they were going to the glory. So for the Lord, the removal of those servants of the Lord uh, was not very important. Not that God was not worried and traumatized or, or, or the suffering of the church. The church went through the suffering, but the Lord knew that He had the best for the church. And the church leaves off of this faith. So we can observe that the actions of the enemy in the church of Ephesus was to resist the word in the doctrine and the period of Smyrna was to prevent the relaying of the word through the word. So now let us make a, a small pause here which is going to be a question that I want the church to answer now with two words. So let's go. Answer with two words here here is the question answer with two words to the group of actions that the enemy promoted to attempt to destroy the doctrine in the churches of Ephesus and Smyrna respectively of course all of those that have been following the teachings and uh, broadcasts and the Sunday schools will be able to answer quickly so in Ephesus, the enemy opposed to the word. And it's in this opposition, what happened? The church strengthened. And the church consolidated the doctrine. So we understand that salvation is through faith, is by grace. We understand that Jesus is the only Savior. We understand that there, it doesn't exist another intermediary between God and man and that he overcame death. So everything was established. So the doctrine was Jesus died and Jesus resurrected and he is alive amongst us. So this is the doctrine that was mentioned and revealed, observed. This is the first word, was the word that was revealed because it comes directly through the breath of the Spirit of the Lord and eh? started in Pentecostus with the great operation of salvation and then extended in all the writings of the Word and especially in the book of Actions, Acts of the Apostles as we will be able to see including in the meeting in chapter 15 of Acts of the Apostles when they inaugurate the first council of the church and the doctrines are established there from that moment, moment onwards. And now in the second period, which was the period of the Church of Smyrna, the enemy didn't think about a position anymore because the Christians, the church is growing and it's growing and it's going everywhere. So there's only one way out, it's to kill. So now uh, the death was the end of all, all the type of persecution and hunger and imprisonment and tribulation and death. So we see this when the emperors entered, some, some uh, fomented by the Jews, some, some uh, the religious, the pagans, and in this, in some way the church went through this moment. It was very difficult. And now I would like to speak about the church reformation. And then we'll come back later to the book of Revelations and the parables. But now we're going to see how the Reformation of the 16th century, we're celebrating this month, already said, the 500 years of the Reformation of the Church of, of the 16th century. I want to remind with the brethren the four doctrinary principles that can be extracted from the 95 theses that were placed by Luther on the Cathedral of Luthenberg in Germany. They served as basis for the Reformation that was called the Protestant Reformation. Why was it called uh, Protestant Reformation? Because the reformers were protesting against the abuse of the church of the time. 
So we'll see all read all together. The one, the brother to read together with me these four principles of the uh, ref religious reformation of the 16th century. So the six these principles were the principle that Luther defended because the church didn't like it, but. But Luther defended the four principles, and then we're going to read it all together. What was the first principle that was established here? One of the principles, which was the first that is there together. The free examination of the scriptures, the Bible, the word of the Lord. The second, the supremacy of faith over works. So we understand clearly this aspect we're going to enter into this later the word the lord shows it clearly we know that we are saved by faith um, but and not through works that's what the primitive church said and the third aspect the third part of the thesis was jesus christ the only mediator between god and man so there was no other mediator other than jesus there are not saints or men that can do this mediation. And the fourth was the universal priesthood of the believers, which is here. So the brethren are here, the reading, which is regarding the right of the servant of the Lord to go directly to the Father without the need of us another man that would do the mediation of this needed person to God. So men begin to have the right through the word, through the scriptures. So the Bible was opened up at that time, simply in order to say and to confirm those doctrines there are there were there. So what actually happened was that beside those four principles that were extracted from the ninety five thesis, the four principles there are here. They were extracted from the 95 Thesis. The Reformers also pointed out more than 30 deviations from the behavior of the Church that were contrary to the Biblical doctrine, for example, amongst all, all of those 35 deviations from the behavior of the Church. We see uh, the year 431, they established the service to Mary in the 436 the philosophy entered that has already been established in the first days of the the church even Paul complains about the philosophy as part of the doctrine so the doctrine in itself has to be understood that was no longer by faith is was through reason so the doctrine was now had to be confirmed through philosophy and or through reason, human reason, which was not plausible in the concept of the church itself, primitive church, because everything that came to the doctrine was revealed, was not something, was not a doctrine, as a science. So the other aspect was the es establishment of the service only in Latin, which was the year 600, service is only in Latin and 19, um, 1184 was the Inquisition. Why the Inquisition? It came to kill the ones that had the word. It, the word had to be destroyed. And so what they did, they would burn everything. Everybody that had a book or a book written about the word of the, or the doctrine was destroyed. So the worst was still to come which is very important, was when, when 1229, the Pope decreed the prohibition of the reading of the Word of the Lord. The Word of the Lord could not be read. Christian could not read the Bible. So imagine the attack uh, against the Word and the doctrine. Uh, the service to bring uh, difficulty to everyone, uh, all in Latin and why Latin. Latin was a language that was spoken uh, during the Roman Empire, because the Roman Empire had controlled the world, but it didn't have, uh, they had not used the original language, the Saxon language, the Germans, or, or 
the French and the others. He, the language was the language that was spoken in the region, uh, German and English, the French, and it was a, a mix of the languages. So then the service was going to be only in Latin, so nobody understood anything. So everything was right, all right. So that was the great attack against the church, against the church, no, against the word. The beginning of the Inquisition was to kill. And then the people was forbidden for, from reading the Bible. They could not read in English, French, or, and uh, reading was already very difficult at that time. The gospel were the, the, there were, it was ready, the word is being spread through, at that time there were the scrolls and tables and everybody knew very well those that were interested in, in reading. And then we'll see, then he, he chose a pocket of cold water to everything. So, he, so after the Reformation, when the church understood that their form was going to remove from them the right of still controlling the world of the time, what did they do? They decided to make a consul. The consul of Trento was uh, 1543, and then the formation in uh, 1547, so 500 years. So in 1530, it exploded in the whole Europe. And 1546, now they decided to to do a, readjust everything. So the press was away from it, from it all. The means of communication, practically, they didn't exist. So, so what did they do? They added, in order, or in order, instead of going back to the word, no, they said no. This Bible that we have is wrong because we have twelve more books to add onto the the, the Bible. They are apocrypha books because they are apocrypha because they they are not part of the biblical canon of the Jews. The books that were part of the Bible. So imagine. The Bible was built way before then, 1546 was the beginning from the letters of, of Paul and the, one, the year 100 was the, the Bible was ready. But now in 1546 they decided to add more books. The Reformation was that it's put 12 and 13 books. There are a ser series of books that were added. Those books had no inspiration from God. Every book of, of the Bible has inspiration from the Spirit. None of these books has any inspiration. And even more, the books that criticize the most the idolatry, the, the, uh, the books of Judith and Book of Maccabees, everything that can say against idolatry, those are the books that were added. So we're not worried about this. And we're also not worried about religion of whoever it be. The word is not an offensive word. We speak about history and we continue with it. So we'll see, according to the reformers of the time, what was happening was that the church was leaving a period of corruption and, and flaws. And worst of all was that this corruption and, and those mistakes, they also sold indulgences. What was an indulgence? indulgence was a piece of paper that was sold by the church uh, by the order of the Pope they they sold us as, uh, as an indult so if you practiced a crime committed a crime for example you killed someone of your family maybe your father you, or uh, killed your mother or killed your brother so you had a, a, a specific type of indulgence you would buy uh, the indulgence from the Pope and was already signed was uh, like a piece of paper was indulged and this paper would give you the right to go to heaven without having to carry this kind of sin you purchase purchase the forgiveness for your sin who was preaching this was Tetsu 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 was one of the greatest preacher of the the church at the time and he said the following as the coins hit the bottom of the coffer, your sins are forgiven. So this 
calls a rage on the reformers. This is not possible. This is works because so and salvation is not through works. Salvation is through grace. So it's, it's not only for those who have money. And nobody can purchase salvation with money. So this is one of the reasons the broader reflection, a doctrine of reflection, and promoted a transformation that was very painful at that time. The church at the time and removed what was spiritual uh, and replaced it with what was formal. They didn't care about uh, God speaking. They didn't need to read the Bible. The church only had its own ritual, had the mass and the way it could manifest. I'm not criticizing anything. I want to say it again. People need to understand uh, this is This is something that is part of who participate in this religion or any other religion. Why was the spiritual? We can do all, everything. This. So they instituted the biblical authority through the identity of the church. So it's not the Bible, the word of the Lord that will guide, that will govern. It was not the verb. It's not the Holy Spirit that is in this word. It's not the living word that is going to work. Is the organization, is the authority of the church, the political authority. Because the, so this church uh, made change in behavior that after they added a million, which was 1312, they built a ecclesiastic structure. What did it make? How did it organize? From the beginning, it wanted to make this organization, but it was not able because the doctrine. So the church needed to be like the Old Testament. It had to have a, a, a discipline, ecclesiastic discipline. Would have a chief, uh, 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 the subordinates. So the, all the obligations had to be to the chief of the church. And because of the fact that the church did no longer need authority from the Holy Spirit, the church took its uh, uh, the uh, possession, the authority, in order to determine. And the solution to its own problems and the political problems. So liturgy was established that was similar to the Judaism in which who was going to uh, conduct the, the Mass had to have uh, uh, special robes like in Old Testament. It had to have the uh, uh, bell like the holy priest used to use the the frankincense that the, the priests used, they institute what was called the Mass. So the, all the liturgies were established in the same way as the, the Jews. So now they also established a pagan uh, habits. So when they started promoting uh, adoration to idols, they did like the, the same as what the pagan church did. So it became an institution that was a ideological institution with uh, political power. Um, uh, the church needed this because when the Roman Empire was destroyed, so the church, so the church goes to another region, which is now called Turkey. But at the time, uh, there was, and the church moved to another place. So now the church builds another place of uh, like the headquarter was Constantinople was called uh, after Constantine because of the attacks of the barbarians and all the things of the time. So the church now was controlled by the government and entering to the medieval period it has to answer to the need political needs of the time. If there was a necessity, the church was going to use religion in the name of God in the same way we always used in the uh, raising of kings and all of it. Well, I'm not criticizing any of it. We're just saying what is history. So now I'm going to s stop here. I'm going to ask the following question. Can we affirm here? Can we affirm that the conclusion achieved by the reformers established a link, prophetic link, with the teachings that have been done at this moment in the Sunday school? This is the first question. So let's go to the sec second question. 
in your understanding, what is the prophetic link that was established be uh, of the between the question, the previous question? So, what is the uh, understand that we uh, that the reformers were able to extract, and also we were able to extract in the Sunday school that has a prophetic link. So, what we are studying on the Sunday school has a prophetic link to the reformers in, with the period of the religious reform reformation. So the question is, in your understanding, what is the prophetic link that was established in this question? So now let's go to the first answer. The first answer is, we don't even to need to read the Bible. Who, is the, who are the following the, the Sunday school who will be able to answer? Yes, yes, we can make a link. So, so let us make this prophetic link between what we are teaching about the book of Revelations in our Sunday schools and the prophetic moment that existed in the period of the Reformation, the religious Reformation of the 16th century. Let's go to the second answer. The answer is the following. The prophetic link that existed between the beginning of the church and the period of the Refor Reformation, in spite of all the opposition and death that was suffered by the church, the word prevailed as basis to the doctrine of the Reformation on the 16th century and will continue prevailing. So the answer is that. So in this prophetic link, and between the moment that we are living and the moment of the Reformation, we'll see that there is a prophetic link between the, the beginning of the church, that the study that we are doing uh, of the letters. So seeing the letters and the parables, this prophetic link with this moment of the Reformation, re religious Reformation of the 16th century. So we're going to see another detail. The conclusion of the studies that we have been doing on the Sunday School is linked prophetically to the four principles of the religious Reformation. So this topic is going to be approached in relation to one of the first themes of the Reformation. So we're going to see here this theme of the religious Reformation that is related to the studies that we have been doing in this Sunday School. We're going to pick up the one, the first. So the first, the first topic that is the thesis was the free examination of the scriptures. This is one of the topics. It's, it's, it's not. This this is just one of the topics of, of the top the four of out of the ninety five theses. This is just one of them. The free examination of the scriptures. In fact, what did Luther want? The reformers wanted the following. The word had to be free to be read. Why? Because the word, all the, all the secret of the church, the church can only live through the word. And the word, the word will remain. And Luther, Luther fights for this. The song that is being played right now speaks of it. Because that the word will, go, will remain, we are sure of. And there is another important detail. Men will, and will be left behind. The persecutions, the death, and all the trials, the oppositions to men, they could happen, but the word was going to remain alive. It would arrive to our days, and besides that, until the finish of the times, nothing will prevent the word from proceeding. And everything that we see throughout, from the beginning of the primitive church, uh, to even uh, Luther, men have risen up, and they pointed out, "No, the wrong, the mistakes are great. We cannot agree with this." But there was the right moment to promote the Reformation, because the political aspects they controlled the world of the time, and the church was the owner of the feuds, the feudalistic. Uh, time that the, so the church had control over the entire world there's no way out of that so the church the church didn't need the Bible because the 
the, the church began to think about the, the earthly kingdom. And many even thought that the, the church was going to establish the millennium. Even a few Christians, they believed that in the past, they prophesied, they said that the millennium was going to be like this, was going to be directed by the Christianity, by, by the church. And a few were just very happy because they were no longer being under the persecution of the Roman Empire. They, they thought they were going to govern the entire world. They had the money, they have everything. And they had a politic that they were using upon the world. Well, that's not how it was supposed to be. The fight was not against flesh and the blood. Uh, the fight was to prevent the word from being deviated from the doctrine that was the doctrine, the apostolic doctrine. So, besides the ten zones of persecution of the Roman Empire, there was uh, several discussions, theological and philosoph philosophic, to create the fathers of the church. So the church didn't need Paul, Peter. They didn't need anything of the doctrine because the fathers of the church, those that discussed, discussed uh, the church philosophically, they only had appreciation to the teachings of Jesus, of what Jesus said. Everything in the past, everything was with them. So they were the fathers of the church. So they began to change many things. Some even with a good heart, without the teaching of the revealed word, they began to build an environment, a doctrinal environment that was comparable with the government, the political government, that was established in the life of the church and strengthened after 1476 when the church left the east and went to the west and went to Constantinople today Istanbul in Turkey so the church was freed from the attacks of the barbarians that were attacking constantly the Roman Empire inside of today uh, Roman Rome and that region down there so the barbarians would come and attack all the time so so the church began to point out kings and replacements, elements that represented them everywhere. They built universities. So the church started taking possession of what everybody thought was a wonderful thing, but in fact, it was a replacement of the word, the name of Church of Christ to become just a Catholic church. It was no longer a Christian church, it was just a Catholic church. And what we see in previous periods to this, which were trials that were fought to remove the Bible from the people. Today, my brethren, my beloved brethren, our concern today is, is to say that the word will remain. Today is a revealed word, and it's no longer of contemplation of the word that was hidden in the heart that nobody will remove. It's a revealed word, and it's in the heart. It's not a word that was dictated. It was, it's not the letter that can be contested, but it is a revealed word. My brethren, today we praise the name of the Lord for this, and we repeat here that when Geronimus, in between 13th and 14th century, he translated the Bible from the original to Latin. It was called Vulgata, the Latin Vulgata. So there's a moment that was the, uh, the the Bible was was imprisoned in the in the mosques. So whoever could read the Bible were the religious. The, the so there was this uh, forbidden from the Pope that nobody could read the Bible. The persecution remained in many moments. We can highlight. Of their, all of this, the destruction of those that testified of the word of God. See, the abysians, the obedienses, and Valdenses in 1170. And we live in 1324 and 1384. John Hus, who died on a fire. Uh, 13, 1369, between 13, 
1617. He, he lived in the, during this period and he was killed on fire because of the word of the Lord. And after the Reformation, 70,000 Christians were killed in the night of San Bartolomeo in 1572. And this information that were, are based on the studies that we're doing of the letters and uh, of the parables. I'm going to ask you a question, another small question. And just even even to close this service, how many minutes do we have? Okay, so let us go to the first question. In the second parable of the king, the word of the Lord is represented by the seed of the wheat of the or of the shaft. So all the bread, all the bread that watched and uh, still watch the Sunday school have the answer very easily so the question is in the second parable of the kingdom what is second what is the second parable of the kingdom is the the wheat and the shaft so the word of the, the Lord is represented by the seed of the wheat and or the seed of the shaft the answer is pretty simple it's the seed of the wheat is the word of the Lord so the second question is who sowed who sowed the seed of the chef? And the answer is the brethren already know. Who plant who sowed the seed of the chef? It's one enemy. Well, the answer is one enemy. It's not the enemy, it was just one enemy. Because if you say a enemy it can be the flesh or the enemy. So it's part one help uh, the other. So the third question we're going to see here now showing there the word enemy is referred to one of the two components that is described as world world this is one of the two words that com compose the enemy the two word is world and what is the other component that combined with the word world will uh, define the word enemy. What is the other word? And we know very well. Uh, the answer is here, it's flesh. So my brother, uh, you're asking and you already answered. We're, we're asking you not know, to reinforce the teachings that are necessary so that the church take the right direction that the church needs to take at this time. All the emphasis is to the word. So now, in the fourth question, the qu fourth question, the opposition through the persecution, imprisonment, uh, impoverishment, and death continuing the life of the church until the period of the Reformation. Is this a question? This is a question. Yes or not? To the brand can say yes. So now, 4.1 in relation to the teachings uh, of the Sunday School, previous teaching of the Sunday School, mentioned a text from the Revelations or a parable that confirms the answer to the previous question. So now I'm going to allow the bread to have two minutes to answer this text that you can find in the book of uh, chapter 2 of uh, Revelations as well as as well uh, as chapter 13 of Matthew so let's read so do, do, we, do you think that the brethren will have enough time to answer it we're not going to get out of we'll remain here waiting so I understand even that we need a little time for those that are here for the first time if they are watching for the first time I'm going to ask Pastor Jesus to read in a few minutes the answer you can come here he has the answer. Pastor Jusen here. He's not doing anything. He came from uh, trips all over the world. He's now on vacation here in Victoria. Amen, my brethren. In fact, in Revelations, we're going to find this, this text. And chapter 2, verse 10, when it's written the following. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. 
indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days be faithful unto that and I will give you the crown of life in another text we find in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 25 when we find that the expression related there to the to this question the text has the following but while man sli slept his enemy came and s sued Taurus among the wheat and went his way. So here's the answer. The brethren for sure have already found in these two minutes. So let us continue. So I'm going to ask you another question. The brethren, they have been following the subject, the teaching. What was the real objective of the Reformation? So I'm going to answer so that the brethren may be able to choose the answer A or B. So the answer A will say the following was to free the Christians from the persecution, tribulation and death. Imprisonment, tribulation, death. Was that the main objective of the Reformation or was to confirm and consolidate the doctrine, apostolic doctrine through the word? The answer is A or B. What are you answering, my brother? The answer, the right answer is, do you know which one it is? It's B. The Reformation was not because of us. It was not because of persecution. It was not because of money. It's not because of the trials and the, to free Christians from it. No, it was to support to co and to consolidate the word and the doctrine. Because the word, that it is all, all the reason of the existence of the work and of the project of God for salvation that the world opposed to. So I have a few more questions to do, but I'm going to leave it on the board as we finish here. I'm going to leave on the board one question for the next meeting in order for the brethren to study with attention the answer. Don't be hasty. It's going to be on the board or remain on the board. And I don't want to say something else. The information here is that this answer needs to be being parallel with the doctrine of the word, the revealed word just a little tip so the word here the question is here so there is uh, information in order for you to understand a little better so the observation for so everything is written here is there's another instruction so the next Sunday this coming Sunday we're going to give you the answer and we're going to enter into this second theme of the religious reformation which was the supremacy of faith over the works which is also related to the parable of the kingdom and also to the letter to the church of Pergamos which is the third church so we're going to make a comparison bring to the church and the teaching of the church of Pergamos and we're going to speak about the teaching is here the supremacy of faith of works so I'm going to also send uh, my embrace to and Russia here, the presence of our brethren here with us in the United States in this broadcast, and send an embrace to our brethren here in Newark that we have in New Jersey. And I want to say to our brethren that we, it's great joy to be with you. And also we have a pastor that uh, left here and out there, and Pastor Jason is, is back in our embrace that we that we sent to all the press that are gathered in this great and blessed meeting which is a seminar in the city of Newark in the United States we want to send everyone the peace of the Lord
Very strong, very loud. Bless be the name of the Lord. I invite the church to stand up. My brethren, the study of this morning was a study that was more historical. But when we are in the con prophetic context, even the study of the historical brings to our memory what is eternity. Men that gave their lives so that today this word could be accessible by everyone. This is a wonderful privilege. Today we can, we can we need to teach our children to give worth to the word of truth, but bring us life, our compass. And as the song that they just sang, use us, Lord, is the desire of our heart, that we may be instrument in the hands of the Lord, and that the Lord may preserve in us His work of the Holy Spirit that He has allowed to remain amongst us is a great joy embrace this let us embrace this and give worth to this church this open door in which we live experience of cures deliverances salvation day after day experience of love and and life together the world doesn't know what it is they think it's an uh, utopia but to us it's uh, truth in the presence of the lord now let us pray with the position of hand upon the classes children intermediate and adolescents the deacons have written to be with us. The microphone at their disposal so that they may pray to the Lord. The church in fellowship seeking the Lord so that his children may grow in the fellowship of the Lord, giving worth to the salvation. Beloved Father, at this instant, we're placed in your presence. We're prostrated in your presence, and the children, the adolescents, the intermediary, that they poured out your, we ask that you poured out your power in their lives. I want to ask you, Lord, that you show the growth of your work. Many were the problems that happen and also the victories that's why we're here giving worth Lord to this work of the Holy Spirit that has touched our hearts bless these children adolescents intermediary so that they may continue that they be people valiant servants that they may continue doing your work doing a great work in this place we pray to you for this victory in the holy name of Jesus amen doing this prayer and with imposition of hand was there a sign from the Lord you can see me right the children were in the schools the place you could see that they were so that the children had a torch in their hand and, the, and with this torch there was there were a few animals there were predators and I know that these predators they didn't come close to the children because of this torch the predators were, would stay away because of the fire. Blessed be the name of the Lord. While we remain in the presence of the Holy Spirit of God amongst us, no evil will hit us. Thanks to, we praise the Lord for this. Let us finish the service with joy, praising the name of the Lord. Because everything that the Lord has poured out upon us is reason for us to be uh, praising the Lord. It's a growth and edification. 
There's a proclamation to the Lord. This structure, my brother, they cannot be counted. How many things the Lord has done for us. That's why we rejoice. Lord, receive the service, this moment in your presence as an adoration. Take us home in peace and security for another day of blessings. Deliver us from violence, the accidents and infirmities, and any arrow from the enemy. Lord, send your angels to camp around us. Use us, Lord, to evangelize, to invite lives, so lives may be saved on the service tonight. Use us with the spiritual gifts, with the precise gifts, incisive that speak directly to the heart of the needy. We ask you, Lord, prepare us for the coming of the Lord Jesus. If it is your desire to send your Son before the end of the service, we'll celebrate in eternity, dancing around the throne, throne and praising your name for all your benefits towards us. We praise to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. A peace of the Lord to everyone. And we're going to have a small meeting with Group C.